call the school board meeting to order. And we're going to go to item A or item B. I need a motion to approve this agenda. I need motion by Janice. Second. 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 second by Ricky. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C. I'd like to welcome Ms. Debbie Maynard with White Associates to go over the audit reports with us. Ms. Maynard. My audit down here give me questions and that I can turn to. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to, uh, to tell you I am Debbie Mayer, the owner and auditor um, with White Associates, and Artie couldn't be here tonight, Artie White, so he asked me to come and present the audit to you. Um, and then we really want to thank the superintendent and uh, Myra Beth and uh, the school personnel and everyone else who contributed to getting the audit done. We appreciate that very much. And first of all, I think the easiest thing to do is if you'll turn to page 82, it's a summary of the audit report. This is summary of auditor's results. You see that? Okay. So um, when we do the audit, there are three different types of reports. Uh, the first report is the independent auditor's report, which, uh, as you, it's the first line there. You can see it's an unmodified opinion, and that is the best type of opinion you can get, and that's what you really want, and that's what you got. So that was good. And then the next one starts talking about government auditing standards report. It's the next two. Uh, we're showing that there were no significant deficiencies and none of them were material, so there were no findings reported. And the third one says there were no material non-compliance that was reported in the government auditing standards. Then our next report is uh, has to do with your federal major, your major programs for federal monies. Um, and so the first line there, you'll see that they're asking, was there any material weaknesses <coughs> in your major programs that we tested? And there are, it says no. Were there any significant deficiencies in internal controls that were not considered to be material weaknesses? And there were none reported there. And then what type of report was issued on compliance for the major programs? So you had an unmodified opinion. And then the last question that I'm showing is that the audit disclosed findings that it relates to major programs. And that is no. So all three reports were uh, as good as really as you can get. And there were no findings. As you can see right down below, there are findings. None for the financial statement audit. That's the government auditing standard. And then, uh, as far as the major federal work, there are no findings there. But if you look kind of up in the middle, you'll see major programs. We tested your educational stabilization fund. I think they call it ESSER, maybe. Um, so you know what that is. If we tested 2.5 million in expenditures, is what we were required to test for the federal program that we selected. And you had no findings, so that's wonderful. And okay, the next part really, I just wanted to hit some of the financial highlights of your different uh, financial statements that you see in there. It's kind of hard to flip back and forth, but uh, if you do have any questions uh, after we get done here, you can ask me and I'll return back to those if we need to. But the first one I wanted to mention was the general fund. The balance decreased 286000 an overall balance in the general fund of $364,000. Uh, you expended $49,000 on vehicles. Uh, you reduced your indebtedness uh, of the district $454,000. Uh, you expended $348,000 in projects at all the schools. And then the $297,000 of was for the elementary roof project. And the other thing that's new this year is they implemented a new standard, that's what we call standards, an auditing standard, and it's regarding leases. 
Uh, now you normally have the kiss releases for buses. You all know those. Uh, that has normally been on the financial statements. However, your copiers have not been on the financial statements. So they did this new standard and they want us to record the copiers on your financial statements. However, your copiers, you've had them long enough that they were just very immaterial. So basically, uh, they decided, you know, management decided not to record those because those were, were very immaterial. Still had to do all the, you know, the paperwork that we, was necessary to figure out whether they are material or immaterial and whether we needed to record them. So they still had to do all of that work. And uh, it's also required for future audits. But again, we passed on reporting the copy years. So the KISS leases are on there as normal. And basically the KISS leases have been on there too because it says at the end that the buses are yours. Okay. Copiers normally what most districts do is they they get it and they use it and they kind of beat, beat it to death and then at the end of the five years they turn them in and they get all new copiers. But the new standard didn't like that. They felt like that that really need to be included in the financial statements. Uh, and so uh, that's why that new standard came down. Okay, and the last thing is, uh, Artie wanted me to say, he's really encouraging all districts to stay vigilant and prioritizing and keeping emphasis on the finance department. As we see the changes in the labor and economics, the supply and demand, there's a lot of competition for pay and, and fringe benefits. And so he wanted me to say that to you all tonight. Is there anything that we had questions on? I'm not sure if you got to look at this ahead of time. <coughs> is there anything that you might have? And if, if you just don't want to say it right now, but you want to look at it later, and then you run into a question, you can always call the office and either I can give you a call back or uh, we have two, two other auditors and then Artie, of course, who can answer your questions if you feel like you have any. I, I've got one for you. Sure. Is this available electronically now? <coughs> uh, I send I sent her a PDF of it. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You can get that from my desk. Okay. She can send it on. It's under, it's under the new business all the way down. Oh. Um, yeah, well, there's an action item. It's yeah. Uh, I missed it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I got you. All right, thank you. Any other? Overall, it looks like it was a good audit. It was a pretty good audit. Okay. Well, my regret is new, so she probably felt pretty overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> But it, we really didn't find anything that we just didn't Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, moving along to item D, I'd like the newly elected board members to stay so that our county judge, Mike Williams, can swear you in. Swear or affirm, as the case may be, that you support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth be faithful to the Commonwealth of Kentucky, so long as you continue a citizen thereof, and that you faithfully execute to the best of your ability the office of the member of the Parish Board of Education according to law, and do you further solemnly swear or affirm that since the adoption of the present Constitution, you being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within the state nor out of it, 
will have you sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, or have you acted as a second in carrying a challenge or aided or assisted any person thus offending, so help you God. Congratulations. Pockets, um, superintendent's personnel actions. You've reviewed that. And let's see. Let's move along to B. Approve the treasurer's report. Everybody had an opportunity to look those over. Any discussion or questions on any of that? If so, do I hear a motion to approve? Motion by Bruce, second by Bob Ricky. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right. I have a little showcase right now. Item G. Um, so tonight I wanted to recognize Michelle Sturgeon. Michelle has recently moved into our librarian position, spotted our elementary school, kind of overseeing that, and tell me to come visit because it really has become the hot topic among all the kids. It's everybody's PE is still really in there. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of energy around the library right now. So we have early morning checkout going on. We have kids like giving up their recess. Like they want to go help in the library or they want to make um, book boxes to collect books and things of that nature. And so Michelle has done just within the last few weeks amazing things in our Paris Elementary Library. I'm looking forward to so many more things. She's every time she passes my door, she's a new idea or I want to talk to you about this. And so the momentum around Michelle taking on that library and just the ideas that she has has really just been amazing and I'm just so thankful for her. Thank you Michelle for everything you've done and all the work you've put in. So. <clears throat> that you all may have about the reading program at our elementary school and share a little bit about what we're doing to <clears throat> address our, our reading performance and scores. It's not where we want it to be, certainly. I know it's not where you all want it to be. And so we've put a whole lot in place to address that and really move our school forward. And so we've got a lot of momentum going. What you all see on the screen is what you've got there in front of you. There are some color slides that you'll see up there. Um, uh, these are in printed black and white. So um, we are doing quite a bit. We signed on with the Kentucky Department of Education letters um, cadre. And so that's literacy essentials for teachers of reading and spelling. 
and our kindergarten first grade team, also our special education team. Miss Sturgeon started with us with that and she's continuing on. Um, and we have one second grade teacher receiving training on literacy essentials. And that's kind of, you've probably heard the buzz about signs of reading and it, man, it's everywhere. And so it really is all about the best of what we can do, how we can best spend our time working with students on teaching reading. And so our teachers have been completing training. Ms. Grigson is also completing training, the teacher training. I'm completing the training as the administrator piece. And so just to let you all know, it's a two year program for teachers to complete this. And some of our regional co-ops are offering, if you pair this with some other learning that teachers can get a rank change. So it is a very, very comprehensive program for um, updating us on reading. Many of our teachers that um, have graduated within the last five years and come on board to teaching, um, their instruction was a little bit different when they were in college going through. And so, we have to move ahead with best practices, and so that's why we've jumped on board. Another thing that I'm doing personally is working very closely with a cadre of administrators who also have teachers participating in these literacy academies. It's called the Kentucky Literacy Academy. And so we have monthly meetings to talk about what's working well, how do we best support our teachers, what are some support that we need from the department because KDE is really running these um, these cadres and so that has been uh, very beneficial to myself and then also some things that we've been able to implement at our school so Jennifer if you want to scroll on down a little bit more and you all can dig into you know all of those things in your um, packet, you'll see our curriculum that we're using overall. You'll see that on the first page. And that just gives you kind of a, an overview of what we're using. All of the curriculums that you see in place at Paris Elementary are highly rated, <coughs> have been vetted. We've done research on them to make sure that we have what we the best thing we can put in front of our students to make sure that our time is well spent and that our students are well prepared. Um, we do have several additional supports for our students at Paris Elementary. Um, we have a partnership with Hearts in Mind and I think they'll be coming in a, couple, in a month or two to present a little bit about the grant that we have at Paris Elementary to support our students. Um, that's working on small group literacy and social emotional learning. We also have a partner with Paris Bourbon County YMCA and they've provided an instructor to come and work with some of our students that have needs. And so um, Ms. Durbin is working with us as well. Um, we do have our extended school services program. We had that in the fall, about 45 students participated. We're gonna start that back up in February and we have teachers working that in the, in the afternoons. And then we also run our tier three reading program through AmeriCorps. That's something that we didn't have in place last year, and so we've gotten that in place this year. Ms. Trenary does a wonderful job with that. On the second page of your packet, and it may be easier to see up on the screen, is some of our growth based on our most recent iReady testing in the area of reading. And so you can see that lighter colored bar at the bottom is our fall um, score information. The bar above it is how we scored at this, at this last time. Anytime that red is shrinking and green is growing, we're making progress. And so as you can see, the hard work of the teachers is really showing us that we're moving in the right direction. It just takes time. It takes a, a lot of time to get students where they need to be. Um, so Jennifer, if you wanna scroll on up just a little bit. So down at the bottom, you'll see um, a grade by grade breakdown of the percentage of students that have moved up in placement for reading. And so, You'll see the grade on the far left column. On the far right, you'll see the percentage of students that have improved their placement. 
And so based on the strategies that we're implementing in the classroom, you'll see that 35% of our kindergartners moved up a level. And so that's great. That's, we want more, but we have movement in the right direction. 50% um, of our fourth grade students moved up a level. And so um, those bars on, the, on that, that first column after you see the grade level is just showing us about how much progress students have made toward a full year's growth. And so you can see 24% of our students have already met their growth for the full year. And so teachers have done some great work to get students to move a whole year's worth in, you know, August to December. And so, Jennifer, if you want to mm -hmm. scoot up a little bit more. On page three, you'll see the research base behind the decision that we've made to move in the direction of the science of reading, or what is also known as structured literacy. And so those names are kind of in tandem. And so we began that work last year. We're continuing that work through this letters training that the teachers and myself are participating in. And so one of the big pieces of structured literacy and the science of reading is the idea that you can see up at the top of this graphic, language comprehension includes all of those things, background knowledge, vocabulary, language structure, verbal reasoning, literacy knowledge, and then it is multiplied by, those skills are multiplied by a student's ability to decode. And so what we see with some of our students is they're able to tap out words, but they may not fully understand what that word means. And so while they can tap it out, that's great, but they may not have the comprehension to understand what it is. So they still aren't there making sense of that word. And so as you can see, elementary teachers have quite a bit of <laughs> balls in the air that they're juggling with teaching reading because it really all of those pieces have to be woven together to become a skilled reader. And so as those skills bump up, then we see students being able to be more skilled readers. And so this is one of the graphics that's very common amongst the science of reading community. And then if we'll scroll down just a little bit more, you can also see this is some information for you to kind of take a look more in depth at. Um, you know, tonight when you're trying to go to sleep or you know tomorrow and it really just gives you a succinct overview of the science of reading our training is not succinct it is very robust and um, teachers have completed unit one in the fall it took the entire fall semester unit two is being completed now it'll take the full spring semester and then next year, unit three and unit four of that training will be completed. And so essentially what we're doing is gaining those tools and refining some of our practices in our tool belt to make sure that what we're doing with our students, there's a whole lot you can do with kids in reading. We wanna make sure that the time that we have with them, which is, feels very limited, we are selecting the best tool out of our toolbox and using that with students to ensure that their time is well spent and they are able to become more successful with reading. And so it's a quick overview, a lot of information here. And so I wanted to give you all this so you can kind of digest it. If there are questions, I'm happy to answer those now. If you all have questions later, I'm happy to answer those <coughs> as well. So. This is awesome. Yeah. And can you uh, can you give us a report at the end of the school year? Absolutely, a progress report yeah. from like now to the end of the school year. Absolutely, because reading is such an intricate part of education. It is, and it, it impacts students' performance in every other area. Yes. James Morris was talking with us today, and I thought this was so interesting. He said, when students learn to read music and they become successful reading music, how much that changes their confidence and their attitude in his classroom. And so I think about, that's so powerful to think about that confidence that they gain from learning that practice, how much more if they learn to read um, well 
and how that would impact every single classroom that they're in. And so um, that's definitely our goal. We're always looking at what other schools are doing and what should we, you know, how can we best spend our time to best meet the needs of our kids. Awesome. Have, have you seen a bump in math because of the reading skills going up? We, so, yes. <laughs> um, we also have a math curriculum that we're implementing. Uh, Miss Morris, Leslie Morris, is working very closely, closely with teachers. We are very fortunate to have her be able to be in a position where she can be in the class, hand in hand with teachers, co-teaching with them, and then she also plans with them weekly. And so her math knowledge is second to none. And so besides all of the things we're doing with reading, we definitely are seeing a lot of benefits in math as well. So. Yeah, because the fourth grade, I mean, that's... That's a huge it's uh, fourth and third. Yes. Yes. I mean, fourth, third, and second. We but we're not jump. satisfied. We're, oh, we're no, but pushing that's hard. That's a huge <laughs> jump from where we were. It is. It certainly is. So that that will certainly that. help with test scores. I, yeah. Because that's a thing that I I certainly yeah. hope so. Yeah. But any Thank other you. questions that you all might have? How many, how many more tests before, like, the final? Before the, the KSA? So we will have our spring IRA testing, and so that that will be um, that'll add another graphic to this. So that's um, the IRA testing, and we will also have um, a benchmark for reading in the spring. So we'll have that as well, and so we've got those two. Um, and then at our school, we plan to do some additional like practice with writing and and making sure that we're not only testing reading skills, but we're also looking very closely at writing because reading and writing go so hand in hand. So, anything else? Mm -hmm. Great, thank, thank you. you so awesome. much. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Anybody here tonight for public comment? I don't think so. Okay, we'll move along to our consent agenda. Got several items to approve here. <clears throat> Uh, approved bills, salaries, and wages. Approved superintendent's expense report. Approved fundraiser request. Prepares high school media team to host a film festival on February the 25th. Approved, approved the surplus of bus number 2, 11, and 12. Approved waiving the rental fee for Hope and Titans basketball. Approved surplus of desk, uh, no, of deck and ramp that was attached to the mobile classroom. Any questions about any of those items? I got one about the Titans. Okay. Are they going to be selling concessions or anything like that? No, it's it's a <coughs> just practice space for this oh, group. Practice. It's about half Paris kids, about half Bourbon kids. Okay. Uh, they are going to have one scrimmage here, and I checked with their insurance agent, and they were able to do that. But it's not a they're not collecting a gate or selling concessions. No. It's just they want to get some practice in. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, do I hear a motion to approve this consent agenda? Motion. Motion by Bruce. Do I hear a second? Louis, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, there's no old business tonight, so we'll move along to three new business. <coughs> okay. So, election of school board officers for the 2023 calendar year. someone to nominate our co-chairman for the board. You want to do it again? Yeah, I'll do it again. Okay. Yeah. Bruce, make a motion. Do a second. All in favor of Janice being co-chair, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Moving along to item B. Motion to approve 2023 board meeting dates to be held the third Tuesday of each month at 5 o'clock. So do we keep our board meetings at that time? Is that good work for everybody? Mm -hmm. So do I hear a motion to approve that? Motion to Second by Louie. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion <coughs> carries. Okay. Motion 
to approve uh, item C, motion to approve the uh, fiscal year 2022 financial audit as presented by Debbie Maynard tonight. Motion by Louie. Second. Second by Bruce. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Can I interject just quickly? I want to say shout out to Myra Beth, uh, new, our new finance director, coming on that, and Jackie Morrison and Jenny Hash and Jennifer Gray will be helping out. Uh, they we basically they come in and just flip everything upside down and dig in, and uh, we kind of bend over backwards for them. But they were very thorough at it, and our team did a great job. And then a uh, shout out to Martha as well. Uh, this is reflective of, of the year she was the finance director, so good to have a good clean report. We we improved from the last one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the signatures, so that was mm -hmm. big. There you go. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, moving along to item B, motion to approve draft budget for the 23-24 school year. That's that's in your packet, it, and for this time being, it's still just a roll forward of what we had last year, and we'll make some more tweaks as we get to the May and then the September. Motion by Bruce, second by Janice. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Item E. Motion to approve BG5 for finalization of the Paris Elementary Roof Project. The last step in the process. The last step the about the roof. All right. Okay. Motion by Bruce. Second. Second by Ricky. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Item F. Motion to approve superintendent to secure auctioneer for bus surplus. I'll reach out to the secretary in town and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I hear a motion. Motion by Bruce, second by Ricky. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. G. Motion to approve fee proposal for district facility plan. So this is the what the local planning committee is working on to revise the, every four years we have to revise our facility plan. <coughs> Sherman Carter Barnhart's helping us with that and there has been significant stuff that has to be uploaded into the state system and they also do an audit of basically our entire facilities plan here. So uh, the fee structure, I apologize, I just got added a few minutes ago because we just got that, but it's $6,500 to help through that entire process. And that was a reduction of the yeah, the, the square footage would allow them to charge, by KD standard, allow them to charge over 10000 but because they already have a relationship with us, they're knocking that down to 6500 Good. So do I hear a motion to approve the fee proposal for district facility planning? Motion. Motion by Bruce, second, second. by Louie. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item H. Motion to approve student accident insurance with Zurich. Zurich. So Robert's insurance, he apologized he couldn't be here tonight, but uh, they, they put that up for bid. We've got the same price that we had last year, which is amazing to have something not go up in price at yeah. this time. So uh, I'm recommending that we accept, continue, we go accept that bid from Zurich. Okay. Yeah. Motion. Janice, second by Louie. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. All right. Superintendent's report. He's got a few things to go over here. I'll just let him start at the top and, and go for it. Yeah, so first, a quick update on Kelly Weiss. Uh, two weeks removed from his accident. He really appreciates the, the prayers and, and thoughts that have gone his way. Uh, there's a go GoFundMe that was released yesterday, and there's been significant funds raised there to help him. Uh, I don't think he'd mind me sharing that the individual that hit him doesn't have insurance, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't even think has a license, to be honest. But, so it's a, uh, it, there may be, it's not one of those where insurance it might be a little messy, so uh, I'm glad people have stepped up to help him there. But I uh, also have to give a shout out to Brittany Payless, uh, who has stepped in and filled that role tremendously, tremendously. Uh, her, uh, her love for this school runs, runs deep, probably second only Coach Bob. Uh, and she's, uh, she's showing it uh, now, and, and what she's doing just has been so positive and handled probably if you had to think of the hardest job in the district to just get dropped in your lap, it's probably harder than this than this seat because it, there's just so much unknown and so 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 much specialized. So thank you to Brittany and, and thank you to everyone for the, the prayers for Kelly. Uh, he really does appreciate it and, and is actually home now. Uh, he, he spent uh, 
over, <coughs> over week he's got a few days at, at Moorhead State with rehab, and now he's at home. He's still got significant rehab, got a lot of time before he can put weight on his hips or his feet. Uh, but, you know, he's just kept good spirits, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be excited to get him back when we can. Mm -hmm. It'll be a while. Thank you, Brittany. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, next if anybody is, uh, wants to donate to the GoFundMe, it is on Facebook school page. Yeah, and we'll, we'll probably, <coughs> I'll email it out to yeah. you as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, school board appreciation list, so uh, thank you guys. Uh, we've got a little something here for you on, on the table, but with the, the mug, but also uh, Nick Collier put together a very short video. Y'all can turn around and check that out. Yeah. That's, that's where we're going, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, oh, wow. vacation. <laughs> that, that's our next <laughs> 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 What do you think more members do? Um, the board of Give a second. <laughs> members help us make important decisions for our school. The job might be cheap, people safe, respectful. They make important decisions for the school. So, uh, I think the important part is I think they keep everybody safe here. I think they're in charge of budget and just um, making sure everything is orderly and provided. I think they're like the glue to the school that keep us together and get along. The work. The work. Um, we're going to focus on. Uh, we'll obviously advocate for that. 
Uh, as of this time, there's only four other districts going for that. Uh, and I think two more may be possibly debating it along with us. So, you know, the argument would be if 40 school districts pass a recall of nickels, then the budget has to increase tremendously to match all of those nickels. If it stays at that number, four, five, six, I think there will be a good argument for them to, to match that. And that's, I mean, that's the basis for passing a recall. If not, you would just set the tax rate and put it in your general fund and do what, you, you know, do what we want to with it. Uh, but putting it in that restricted category uh, is the reason because we still have facilities needs. Uh, so as we start moving forward, we want to talk openly and be honest with it. I think being transparent the last time was, was a very uh, a good approach to it. Uh, I think uh, with that scenario that's played out, uh, that, that could be an opportunity. So you're welcome to discuss that now or, or we can we can move on, but uh, or I'm happy to answer any questions about what that could look like. So I mean, funding side of it, uh, from the state, are we we're in close contact with our representative and uh, senators and representatives? <coughs> yeah, it has to be a line item in the budget that you know, if, if it's House Bill one, and it won't even be this; it'll be next next uh, by any means by 2024. So they will just have to say, hey, these were the number of nickels that were passed, recall the nickels that were passed and not recalled, and this is how much it would cost them to match those for 20 years, essentially double our money. So if if, we, if they don't get matched, just passing a nickel would generate us between two and a half and three more million dollars, which would do a big, make a big move towards some of the stuff that we hope to do this, this past time with the inflation kicking in. Uh, if they match it, we're talking about five and a half, six million dollars, potentially more of facility, facilities committed funds that, that could happen if, if it were to be matched. So um, just think so. I don't, I don't think there will ever be an opportunity where, where the, the assessments will go up where you'll still be able to lower the rate and build that in. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. They wouldn't, they wouldn't give me anything in favor, but I, I would be really surprised if the numbers that they give us when they calculate property assessments and tangibles, that when they come back and say, here's your compensating rate and here's your 4% rate, it will be a significant increase. And then that will be the time to, if we want to put a significant decrease, that will be the time to see what that window of, of putting a nickel on top of that would look like. Because we've already passed, where are we on the list to for facilities up there? We're still pretty far on the list, so I, I talked with Senator West about that extensively. Um, you you have to be in like that bottom ten list, and to be quite honest, to get to that bottom ten in the school, I, I'd be embarrassed to be, in, to be to be running that school district. Like the the school would have to be in such poor shape. Uh, you know, I, I, we're getting ready to celebrate Paris High School's 100th year of being around the, the, that <coughs> building, which seems to me that that would call for you know possible funding for a new school. But because it's so well maintained and, and structurally sound, that uh, we're still you know 180 on the list of you know, a thousand buildings. So, um, so just I just want to be get transparent publicly about that, but I also let you go. Um, if you have any other question on that, uh, once those numbers get more locked in, we have a better idea what that will be. But it will be a significant decrease to the rate, nickel or not. We won't know if the state will match that just yet. Yeah, you won't know that until the next legislative budget. So this session they're in right now uh, is not a budget session. So it would be the following year for that to match. Now we could go ahead and bond against what has been passed, so the two and a half million, the three million would be accessible now, but the full, the match wouldn't be, we would, wouldn't be known until the following time. Now granted, like I said, we, we would advocate and lobby for, for that match. Historically, it's been matched for every time the nickel's been passed, so I think legislature would be in a tough spot to not match it, but you know, they, they get to do what they want to do. Uh, you know, so, I mean, but that match could potentially be there for next year. Yes, we would know at the at the end of the next session and, uh, if whether or not that would be matched or not if that was passed. And uh, usually, when do they do that? Uh, so that runs from January. It would be January of twenty four till when the session ends? March, April, something like that. It's a sixty day session. Okay. This one's ended in March, so it might be it's into April. So we know by spring next year. We know by April. April, May of 24, if it's, if, it's gonna, if it's in the budget or not. Yeah. So, and like I said, I'm still optimistic that it would be matched if it were passed, but it's just not guaranteed. Yeah. 
Uh, this next is facilities. Uh, just a quick update on the preschool. By the 31st, we should have the revised, uh, updated bids on the preschool. Once we know that, then uh, there, there's potential for a special call meeting in early February to, to take action if we need to move quickly on that. Uh, once we know those numbers, then it will be what is left over out of our bonding capacity. The other thing, rates went down. Uh, there was a bond sold yesterday at 3.3% compared to 4.25, 4.27 like a month ago. So uh, if we if that goes down, if, if we can get anything close to that, that increases our bonding capacity with the with the double nickel that we've had. So that could open some doors uh, for some additional projects. But there will be some decisions that may be made uh, once that preschool number comes in, assuming it's at, at a spot that's able to move forward, then you guys will have to decide what little bit window is left, how much is left there, and what things you want to, to spend that on at that time. So uh, once I have that, I'll, I'll get as, as detailed a list together as I can for you and, and make a recommendation, but ultimately that's your all's uh, decision to make. Uh, last couple things, I thought this was gonna be a long meeting. Uh, Western High Night is next Monday night. Uh, Coach Barr presented last uh, week. Uh, we're inviting all those uh, alumni to come, and I think we'll have a good turnout. We've got uh, a couple of little surprises for them that we're going to uh, share that I think Coach Barr mentioned that they, they're not aware of. Uh, so I'm really excited to see, uh, to have that event. And, and we'll have a chili supper at 6, and the game, uh, ceremony beforehand, and the game starts at 7.30. Uh, and our teams will be wearing Western jerseys, and cheerleaders will be wearing Western. So uh, it's going to be really cool for I, I I told it, I think I told Angie this the other day, I had a really cool, at the Martin Luther King uh, march, I was sitting next to Miss Hattie and uh, Buckner, Lucy Jackson, and mm -hmm. talking to them a little bit, and uh, they, they invited me to the Western High reunion uh, this summer, so uh, I was really honored to, to be invited when they come by and, and say a few things. So uh, I think the, the Western High community definitely loves, feel like we've adopted them, and definitely part of our community and, and history here, so uh, gives me goosebumps thinking about it, how, how much of a connection we have. We still got, we got so many grandkids and great grandkids that are still connected strongly to the, to the school. Uh, and then on February 4th, we're doing a, a regional, 1970 regional championship boys basketball team and cheerleading state championship night. So that 1970 squad we recognize. Uh, Nick is putting together a uh, special video tribute uh, to that to that crew. Uh, we're trying to if you know of any videos or pictures uh, from them that you could want to share, send them my way. Uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, and then the, I think three nights later, uh, we have the 2017 All A State Championship Boys Basketball Team will be recognized, and we'll be doing a, a video for that. Our goal is to, to we've got a screen that we can pop up in the, at halftime and play a video uh, in the middle of the court at halftime of the game. So. Uh, a bunch of exciting recognition. I'm really excited about that recognition committee that's come together to help recognize these different groups, and we're going to continue to do that as we move forward. We're catching up a lot this year because of COVID, and we haven't been able to have many of these, but uh, it's the history here is phenomenal, and I think uh, our alumni appreciate when we recognize, and, and, and I think our kids uh, benefit from that. You'll see at the Western High Night, we've got kids in every school having an active role in, in that evening. So, so what day took place, Mr. Uh, the Western High Nights next Monday. Okay. The 70 championship is on February 4th, and the 7, 2017 All-A is on the 7th. And actually, Terrence is coaching at Harrison County, and we're playing Harrison that night, so he'll be back <laughs> for that, uh, kind of coordinate with that. So uh, Coach Barr's done a phenomenal job leading through all that. And then something I didn't put on here, we're having a realtor brunch on February 9th. Uh, so we're inviting every realtor that has a listing in Harrison Bourbon County uh, to come to the cafeteria, uh, Hopewell Bank Exchange and Cafe Marco are doing a brunch for them. Uh, we've got two students that are going to be doing a uh, presentation, a five minute presentation for them. And then uh, the Chamber Magazine you all saw, uh, Nick's putting together a little front and back pamphlet that will go and that way they'll leave here with 30 or 40 of those that when they sell a house Hey, drop this in there so that people know uh, just a, a quick inf information. So we've got some awesome door prizes that I think will, will draw a crowd. We've had uh, Stockyards Bank is sponsoring, Ashley McFarland, Kentucky Farm Bureau's, or Urban County Farm Bureau sponsoring. Uh, so got some great gifts that are really nice that I think will 
we'll get some some realtors here and it'll be in and out uh, but I'm, we've got two students doing a presentation for that so uh, if you're free and want to come by that morning it'll be a nice meeting it starts at what time nine to ten on the on the ninth so that's all i have any questions about that exciting it is Comments, Louis. Uh, yeah, I got a couple. Um, thank you for um, the update for Paris Elementary School. I really appreciate that. Um, it's we're moving in the right direction, I think. And I just want to uh, give a shout out to Ms. Sturgeon. Uh, Luke wouldn't be in the position that he was he's in now if it wasn't for Ms. Sturgeon. So mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, <clears throat> is there any way that we can look at helping the, uh, track funding for uniforms? That's something that I know that I know they got some for middle school, but I think their uh, high school is kind of uh, depleted on their funding. Yeah, um, last year during COVID, we granted the board granted a hundred dollars per student to help offset some of those funds off. Um, High school boys track was only given 500 last year, so I'm checking with Coach Murphy. He says he's already got 10 or 12 going now. Um, and then I think when basketball is wrapped up, that, that number might even go up. So uh, I, I wouldn't be opposed to recommending that the board approve bumping that number up based off the, the enrollment they have. I've also reached out to Coach Murphy as well about some different fundraising opportunities. So yeah. um, I think getting we want, to, we want all our teams to be able to go out and uh, we've had track here for a long time and a strong success in track, but it kind of died down there for a little while. Yeah. So uh, he's definitely got it heading in the right direction with numbers. My understanding is of the whole track team is like got 38 kids already yeah. and possibly getting maybe five to seven more yeah. once once basketball is finished. So it's huge for yeah. a Class so, A district. Yeah, it's exciting. So, so I'll do a little bit more digging in with that uh, and see where the exact numbers will be. But um, because that number was so low last year, only five kids counted last year, if that number truly is a significant number, I think it would be uh, fair to do that to, re to recommend you guys a, a little bit of additional support. And then, like I said, we're working with the high school admin team and the athletic director to make sure Coach Murphy has the connection to do some fundraising as well. Okay. And uh, thank you for the um, board appreciation video. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Ricky? I don't have nothing to know. <laughs> 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 I mean, okay. like, I'm on. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to thank everybody in the school district for uh, working hard and, and, and making kind of a turnaround for all the different schools and stuff like that. Exciting to see all the different things that are going on. Why well, I guess we'll be we have a bunch of students that will be featured on WKYT in the next few months, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's exciting. Like that, so. Thank you, James. Hi, it's Sophie. Chamber magazine came out <clears throat> and Nick put together this beautiful two page um, ad in here about our school. And if you haven't had a chance, Chamber of Commerce has several copies. I think they're going to give the school several copies. Nick, fabulous job. Thank you. Fabulous. Um, when you open it, it's like, wow, it's really, really nice. So if you get a chance, get it and read it. It's super, super nice. And of course, it's got a secretary on the front. Um, the other thing I'd like to um, thank everybody who came tonight and, and for all the hard work. Your presentation about reading was wonderful. Thank you so much. And 
Michelle, thank you for all your hard work. It does not go unrecognized. And Brittany, she's my girl. Appreciate everything you do. You've got a good heart, and thank you for stepping in. And the video you put together for Kelly was, made me cry. <laughs> it was very sweet, and I think his family really appreciated that. Um, I would like to say that um, we just had our Class A district basketball tournament here for the girls and the boys. And I got to go to several games, and uh, our boys played good. And of course, we didn't end up where we would have liked to have been. But these these kids played some good games all week, the girls and the boys. And uh, I was just so proud of them. And the game against uh, Bishop Ross, <coughs> uh, the gym was packed, and uh, the kids cheering section was fabulous. And uh, it was really good to see the gym filled. And I'm very proud of Coach Ransom and the good job he's doing as our first year coach. He's got a good heart, he loves his school, and uh, I just want him to know and our team to know that we are very proud of them in the same way with our girls. Um, they represented our school well, and Coach Barr did a great job in helping to put this on here in our district. Um, just keep up the good work and keep moving forward. And Judge, thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you. And that's all I have. Anybody else? Okay, well, with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? Janice? <laughs> Second. Janice? All in favor say aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Janice is back.